If you appreciate all the work that goes into making each episode of Marijuana Today Daily, can you take a minute today and leave a rating and review for the show on iTunes? Just search for the term marijuana and let us know how we're doing. It's hugely helpful in growing our audience as iTunes puts a lot of importance on the number of ratings and reviews when algorithmically choosing new shows to put before podcast listeners. Thanks to everyone who's taken the time to do so already and to everyone who's going to do so today. Good morning, Marijuana Nation. It's Tuesday, August 29th, 2017, and you're tuned in to episode 320 of Marijuana Today Daily. I'm your host, Shay Gunther, and I'll be walking you through today's marijuana news and headlines. As always, we have a full and busy day of cannabis news in our hands, so let's jump right into it. Our top story of the day is the news out of Maryland that the state will be flexible with the two medical marijuana growers and eight processors who have yet to fully spool up their operations as mandated under the terms of their licensing. This is a long reported story here on The Daily, with the most recent news before today being of the deadline for licensed medical marijuana operators to pass their final inspections. As that recent deadline came and went, there was speculation on how the state would handle the few handfuls of companies yet to open their doors, but yesterday the Maryland Medical Cannabis Commission said they would extend more time to those 10 companies yet to finish up, while also granting final sign-offs on five other companies, three cultivation licensees and two processing facilities. The ever-observant Tom Angel over at Mass Roots wrote one of those pieces that has kind of become a Tom Angel trademark piece, he noticed a federal agency changing up marijuana verbiage on their website. In this case, the National Institute on Drug Abuse edited a number of significant passages on their website about marijuana in ways that soften the claimed negative impacts of the drug. In one case, the NIDA swapped out the term marijuana addiction for marijuana use disorder, a somewhat markedly less negative phrase. The changes are, as Tom is reporting, subtle but meaningful, as it should be taken of some measure of progress that the federal agency is making these edits in the face of a very hostile Attorney General Sessions and his Department of Justice. The NIDA operates under the organizational umbrella of the Department of Health and Human Services, but even still, Sessions' reach is long, if a bit unsupported. So over to Tom's piece for the full dive in. As always, we have all the news we cover linked to on our website at mjtodaydaily.com and on our Twitter account at mjtodaydaily. Our final top headline of the day is a local one that hides a national gem of a story. Hat tip to the aforementioned Tom Angel, who first tweeted about this interesting twist, as well as to my buddy Johnny Green over at Weed News, who wrote a story about it. But in short, a story published by Arkansas Online about the hundreds and thousands of anticipated jobs medical marijuana will bring to their state mentioned that David Hiles, an economist with the Federal Bureau of Labor Statistics, revealed that his agency will be releasing jobs data for the legal cannabis industry for the first time on September 6th. This is a big deal as it will provide some pretty serious fodder to anyone making the case for further progressive reforms in cannabis policy. It's really hard to argue against X number of jobs. It's a beautiful statistic that's easy to wrap your head around. Think about your own job, then multiply it by hundreds of thousands and you get the positive economic impact that legal cannabis is bringing, and almost more importantly, that legal cannabis can bring to any state smart enough to allow it in. I look forward to reporting back on this one in the coming weeks. Those are our top stories for today. It's time for Marijuana Today Daily Headlines Blitz. Before we blitz it in headlines, let's quickly thank our sponsor, MJ Today Media, which you know is the publishers of your two favorite marijuana podcasts and the best headlines email newsletter in the industry. We're actually taking a few days off this upcoming weekend for Labor Day and for a quick end of the summer hiatus, so expect some unconventional shows showing up here on the feed on Thursday, Friday, and Monday, with our regular schedule returning on Tuesday, September 5th. That hiatus includes our popular newsfeed email newsletter, which should hopefully let you reflect on just how awesome and vital it is to your business life. Absence only makes the heart grow fonder and all. All right, time for the Blitz. According to the Florida Department of Health's Office of Medical Marijuana Use, there are now more than 1,200 doctors registered to recommend medical marijuana to patients. Qualifying doctors need to take an eight-hour certification course and pass a test on the learned material before being given the official nod to see medical marijuana patients. 
The number of registered doctors has sharply risen since last fall when voters passed Amendment 2, greatly expanding their medical marijuana system. At the time, there were just 290 doctors enrolled in the program. National medical marijuana operator iAnthus just released details and financial statements on their operations for the second quarter of 2017 over at New Cannabis Ventures. The company laid out their numbers and overall strategic positioning for their operations in five states, New York, Colorado, Massachusetts, Vermont, and New Mexico. This is a good one to open up to dive into fully. The next web has a good story up about an issue that most of us probably haven't really put much thought to, the use of automation in the legal cannabis industry. Within the larger context of an increasingly automated future, it's worth spending some brain cycles on how machines and AI will impact our industry. The next web story touches on a number of places where robots and software are already starting to intrude on human jobs in legal marijuana, including packaging, trimming, and even cultivation. Open this one up as it's only going to get worse for us meatbags. We need every bit of informational advantage that we can get. Vogue magazine just wrote a glowing review of Vertly, an infused hemp lip balm company started by former New York City fashion editor Claudia Mata. This story isn't notable so much for its content, but just for the fact that Vogue magazine is talking about marijuana infused products in a pretty run of the mill way. Cannabis is creeping into the mainstream more and more, and pieces like this are really just cultural indicators. We talk a lot about marijuana use by NFL players here on Marijuana Today Daily, but rarely do we see headlines about cannabis in the NHL cross our desk. Gage Peak over Leafly just published a great story about how medical marijuana was useful in supporting and extending the career of NHL enforcer Riley Coate, who made a living as a skating boxer, being the guy on his professional hockey team who would be looked to at first when it came time to start fighting on the ice. With hockey being a physically punishing enough sport as it is, enforcers have to deal with the additional impacts of getting punched in the face and the head on a fairly regular basis. Gage's piece goes into detail on how Mr. Coat, who played eight years in the NHL, started using medical marijuana fairly early in his career after noticing its positive effects. Alan Brockstein over New Cannabis Ventures has a great interview with Mike Gorenstein, CEO of Canadian licensed medical marijuana company The Kronos Group, who I reported on yesterday for closing $24 million to build out a large cultivation and processing facility. With Canada going as big as it is in terms of legal marijuana, this would be a bad story not to open up and read in full. And finally for today, Marijuana Business Daily's chart of the week shows the results of a survey question they asked about women ownership of businesses in the legal marijuana industry. The survey was taken by 567 self-identified industry executives and owners slash founders and indicates that around 26% of legal cannabis businesses were founded by or owned by women, 6% more than the national average of 20%. Those are the headlines and news for the day. I'll be back with you again tomorrow morning with another information-packed episode of Marijuana Today Daily. But in the meantime, if you have any stories to share or feedback to give, zip us an email to headlines at mjtodaydaily.com. And while you're clicking around the interwebs, swing over to our Twitter account at mjtodaydaily and visit our website at mjtodaydaily.com to find links to all the news we cover. Thanks to our sponsor, MJ Today Media, and to all of our awesome patron listeners for the support that makes this show possible. To join the illustrious ranks of the patron listeners yourself, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com and click on that big blue button at the top of the page that says, Become a Patron. I'm your host, Shay Gunther. Thanks for tuning in and starting your day with marijuana today. Today. One take, Shay. One take.